What um, we've sort of discussed this, but just to be clear, what exactly in terms of prevention of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, what exactly are you saying about fish? Are you saying that we should, shouldn't, neutral? What exactly are you saying about eating fish, fish? And also, what about alcohol? Ha <laughs> ha, good one. Uh, can I talk about fish for a minute? One of the problems with fish is that they contain endotoxins. These endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides are extremely inflammatory. What, what do the doctors give the rats when they want to test a new anti-inflammatory drug? They give them the lipopolysaccharides that are found in fish, beef, poultry, and pork. Okay, so these lipopolysaccharides are a real problem with fish because they increase inflammation in the body dramatically. And what does the EPA and DHA do? They decrease inflammation in the body. So it, they're fighting each other. Also, although fish have the, the DHA and EPA, which are omega-3s, they also have arachidonic acid. Now, arachidonic acid is found only in animal fat. And arachidonic acid is processed by the COX enzymes, COX-1 and 2. These are cyclooxygenase enzymes, and they are the target of all of the NSAIDs, aspirin, Advil, all of these things. What do they do? They block COX-2 from processing arachidonic acid into powerful inflammatory leukotrienes, also thromboxanes for blood clotting. This is really not a good idea to take in more arachidonic acid. Another thing we find with fish is that advanced glycation end products are formed when the fish are cooked. And these advanced glycation end products travel throughout the body, dock onto the rage receptor of the brain and create excess inflammation in the brain. This inflammation leads to oxidation and brain cell death, whether it's in the dopamine producing cells in the substantia nigra pars compacta or in the hippocampus or cortex or wherever. Uh, I, of course, the organochlorine pesticides that are bioaccumulated by fish are very well known, as well as DDT, DDE, and uh, PCBs and other ones. Now, another problem with certain fish is that they're high in cholesterol, especially things like shrimp, very high in cholesterol. And this, when you eat the shrimp, and, and a lot of the oils actually have a lot of cholesterol in them too. So the cholesterol gets oxidized and oxidized cholesterol leads to oxysterols which can pass the blood-brain barrier. Cholesterol can't, but the oxyserols can, especially 27-hydroxy cholesterol. And when that gets into the brain, it triggers cell death again. So we, we're not sure that fish is really the greatest thing to do. Um, of course, there's excess protein in fish. Humans only need a certain amount of protein, and that excess protein will stop us from both making our own levodopa and from processing the drug levodopa. There's more about fish, but I think the net result is we should not be eating fish. They're just too polluted for words. Thank you. Do you say anything about alcohol, Steve? Well, I do, but I don't know if anyone wants to hear it. I could get unpopular around here. Uh, <laughs> okay, since you asked, uh, studies have shown that a little bit of red wine a day can reduce heart attack risk. And this is, this is true. And Studies have also shown that the same amount of alcohol increases cancer risk greatly and is responsible for vast numbers of cancer deaths throughout the world. So is there a choice? There is a choice. If we eat grapes instead of red wine, then we don't have any higher risk of cancer and we do have lower risk of heart disease, plus those wonderful anthocyanins that are going to protect our brains from inflammation and oxidation. So I would recommend the grapes over the grape juice uh, made into wine. Uh, however, I know a lot of people are uh, rather fond of this substance. Okay. Um, Dr. Dorsey, do you want to say anything about uh, alcohol or fish? <laughs> yeah, not great evidence. If you have Parkinson's disease with a mild amount of alcohol, it's probably fine. Uh, if you have Alzheimer's disease, I, I think you probably want to think a little bit harder about um, consuming alcohol. You know, a lot of this depends on what stage of disease you are, you know, how your overall health and the like. Um, you had mentioned um, about advanced glycation end products. Now, when, what about regular cooked food? What happens when you have lentils and quinoa? They're, um, they're cooked foods, but is there, um, maybe I'm getting confused between acrylamides and AGEs. 
Um, but the question is with cooked food, there's been reports that I guess they form something called acrylamides. So whether we're talking about AGEs or acrylamides, when, with healthy whole food plant-based foods, is that still a concern? Well, I'd like to talk about AGEs for just a minute. That means advanced glycation end product. Glycation can occur of proteins both inside the body with high blood sugar levels. In fact, the leading marker for diabetes is glycated hemoglobin, the HbA1c scale. It should be six or less, right, if you don't have diabetes. However, when food is cooked, barbecued, broiled, or fried until it's brown, not blackened or anything, but just brown, the Maillard reaction takes place and we get advanced glycation end products. About half of these are absorbed through the gut into the bloodstream, going up to the brain, crossing through the rage receptor and increasing inflammation and free radical damage in the brain by some estimates 50 times the free radical damage that a normal protein would create. However, when you shish kebab vegetables over a barbecue or a broiler, this does not happen. This Maillard reaction cannot happen because of the water. The water blocks the reaction. So advanced glycation end products are never formed with fruits or vegetables or nuts or seeds or beans. Uh, you can barbecue tofu all you want. You're never gonna get an advanced glycation end product. Now that's a completely different thing than acrylamides. Acrylamides occur when you brown uh, carbohydrates such as toast or potato chips. These acrylamides are also damaging components and uh, we all know potato chips aren't the healthiest food, but it's kind of hard to hear that toast, if it's brown, actually does form acrylamides and not so healthy. So it would be healthier, of course, not to use these damaging cooking methods, but a little toast once in a while sounds like a good idea.